Feel the Hate Tour tonight at Junction Bar, Berlin, and I'm with MK Ultra. First of all, guys, welcome to Berlin, and uh, how are you tonight? We're doing pretty amazing. It's good to be here. How are you doing, Ron? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, lots of beer. You know, how you doing? I'm good. I love the beer. <laughs> yeah. Really nice. Okay, let's talk about your music. How would you describe it yourself? Um, I like describing it as a bunch of different uh, musical influence kind of put together. So a musical orgy, if you would, you know, different elements and uh, also an expression on stage as well. So we're a very visual band. Uh, I usually have visuals to the music. That's why I do a lot of music videos and stuff like that. So. Okay, where does the inspiration come from? Well, Berlin probably doesn't know this. I got into a really bad accident, um, nearly lost my life. And I worked in the music business before, but after that I kind of felt like I, um, you know, when you almost die, you figure, all right, well, you really do only live once. And I decided to put this band together and I stalked these people to uh, play with me over here. So uh, it's, it's been going good. I've been torturing you guys. Hey, my name is Bernie, and I play music. <laughs> so uh, what, you already said that uh, the band is very visual, and that's important to you. So uh, does the inspiration come from the same source, or what are your influences for the visuals? Um, usually, you know, when you go through certain experience, more, my visuals is more like looking at the world, kind of analyzing it and poking fun at it at times, but in a very dark way. So some people don't get my jokes and they don't fucking laugh. So it's just the way it is. But um, you know, uh, it's 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 very loud rock and roll music. You know, so no. Okay, and how does this all transfer to your live performances? Uh, what do the live performances mean to you? It's it's a way of um, connecting with other people, and hopefully they get it or they don't. You know, we tend to people either tend to love us or they tend to run away because mostly because of what he looks like. <laughs> I, I can look at him. Scary. Yeah, I mean. That perm's natural, by the way. Yeah, it is totally natural, guys. <laughs> Very well ma maintained as well. It's good. Thank you, yeah. It's very nice. <laughs> so, um, is there any ideo ideology for your music or in your music? Yeah, um, it's definitely trying to get people to see the bigger picture, you know. Part of the visual that I forgot to do is, like, the way I dress and the way we present ourselves as a unit um, I like to look at it as a reflection of all the different parts of the world that are really uh, people t tend to turn a blind eye into so that's why you know I kind of look like a train wreck on stage and I uh, you know because I think the whole world's really a train wreck so I, I try to I I try to get people to look closer at themselves, you know. If it if something makes them uncomfortable as an artist, I think that's a very good thing because uh it's most great art is um not meant to be understood unless it's looked at at a very close way, not just taking it at face value. Uh okay, and uh you mentioned the uh, clothing and uh the teams yeah. that you have and they uh, they involve quite a lot of uh, you know murder sex drugs yeah <laughs> so is this what you were talking about yeah I mean the, the, the thing is is when murder sex and drugs are definitely uh, a lot of the uh, subject matter and the thing is is this stuff happens all the time I like to I like to say like what I say in my songs is what people do joke about inside their houses I just do it in public you know what I mean so like uh, you know I don't know what's it like for you guys yeah people people don't like to talk I go my own microphone yeah. <laughs> people don't like to talk about these things uh, yeah it's sort of a taboo whether it's sex drugs or whatever and yeah we just do it out loud 
Okay, going back to the train wreck world. So, what is wrong with the world today? Well, uh, we're doing the Kill the Hate tour with uh, Healthy Junkies here in some other cities. And it, the song we wrote, it's actually right here. And uh, people have been viewing it and stuff. And I'm, I'm really proud of it because uh, it takes a look of the world at America, which where I'm from, and the UK where they're from, and just how politics have gotten all fucked and people really um, start to always think the grass is greener somewhere else but the fact is is the whole world kind of no matter where you go there's going to be problems because people are involved whenever people are involved there's going to be a lot of problems the more people usually the more and that's why america is such a problem is because it's such a big country and they have this whole bully attitude of like hey we're going to police the country type shit and they've had it for a while and um I don't like it. So uh, th that's that's how I see it, at least. Katie, how do you see it? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Okay, uh, you seem to communicate with your fans in very direct way. Yeah. Uh, how important is the communication be between you and the fans, and uh, what means to use to do it? Well. Uh, Social media is a big thing because I get to say the message which, with the visual, and the visual always pertains to the message. So I, let, I communicate to them a lot through that, obviously. So we have social media. The only other way to go out and do things is reach out and touch them and go on tour, like play a live show for them. Um, but the way I communicate to them is, you know... Um, I'm kind of like, I try to give him the harsh reality, like the lyrics of the songs and stuff, but uh, if there's no connection with anyone else, it doesn't make any sense. But if you're connecting with everyone and you're that commercial, like a Taylor Swift, for example, it's very manufactured. So it's like, but the connection between me and my, our fans and us is very important because there who uh, is listening to what we have to say. Yeah. yeah. So how does the future look like for MK Ultra? Good. Good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> who the fuck knows? <laughs> we'll see. Well, I can find a drummer anytime, but uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, he's a great drummer, and that's why he's in here. But no, the future is more shows. You know, the last three records, I didn't have these guys, so we're gonna do a record together, which I'm really excited about. It's a different process, and it, I, the way I look at it is, you know, all of us contributing to the music is. Uh, gonna create something different from what I've done before so um, you know uh, in that that keeps me from not getting bored and also it makes brings their musical influences into it and it just becomes more of a musical orgy is which is where we kind of started this interview all right thank you so much and thank you so much tonight. thank you cheers thank you